Without the mic, okay. Uh, first things first, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not a professional speaker. I came in just now, I saw all the, all the seats available, I was thinking, oh my god, what did I do my, to myself? <laughs> I had a beer, but it's not really helping. So, we're going to start off tonight. Uh, this is me, in a nutshell, that's what I do. I've been a chef professionally for about 13 years now. I worked in five stars, I worked in uh, Michelin star restaurants here and there. Uh, most of my life was in hotels, uh, that was 13 years ago by now. Uh, I've tried to do my own business twice, uh, both of it fucked up, <laughs> uh, and we'll get to that later on. So the next slide. So this was, uh, this was uh, my previous business, my last one that sort of burned down. Uh, what it was, was it's called Wheels and Wieners in, in case you can't see it. And uh, why wheels was because of a biker. Uh, me and my friends were part of this group who... You guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. So me and my friends were part of this group who were Harley bikers. Uh, a friend of mine had a short space in Little India. Had no idea what to do with it. He opened a small restaurant and he fucked up. <laughs> so he asked me for help, actually. And so I went to his space. I saw the space and I thought to myself, this thing can work. So I went to another friend of mine uh, who became my partner later on to come up with a concept to fit this place. And uh, this came about. And it came about in 10 days. So from the day that I signed the lease over from my friend, uh, who was from California, uh, we had 10 days to build wheels and wieners. And it was, it was bare bones, it was nothing, it was concrete, it was uh, a shell basically. And me, me and my partner called all our friends down, we did the neon ourselves, we hacked the wall ourselves, we put up the mirror ourselves, we did everything ourselves. Uh, the kitchen was in a shit state, uh, no fire was allowed. There was no fire allowed, so we had to do certain things to make it happen very quickly. So this is my, my group. Uh, the, I suppose when the business started, it was very much for my friends, my club. Uh, and that was probably the, the downfall of it, because it wasn't uh, business first. It was the passion for friends first, and the business came afterwards. Uh, for my partner anyway. For me, it was quite clear that we had to make profit. Uh, no matter what love we have for the place, for, for the group, it had to float. So this was a quiet night. Uh, and it did very well for a while. It did very well for a while. In fact, we were making about, on a good day, so a good week, it's about 6000 a night, 8000 a night. On the weekends, about ten grand. Uh, we did very, very well. However, my friend, who is a tattoo artist actually, and he's very well known in, this, uh, in that industry, and with the bikers and all that, he's very, very well known. So he had a pull uh, to this business. But unfortunately, he was not the most business savvy person around. I was the most junior partner. Uh, it was uh, myself, Jeb, and Mike, so three of us. My, my role was, of course, to be the chef, to cook and to produce the food. Uh, that never went wrong. That was always okay. But uh, when, when it came to marketing, uh, there was a huge gap. When it came to the business end of it, the accounting, there was a huge gap. Uh, what I was told from my senior partners, uh, and they were much more senior than me, they were 10 years plus older than me, and I sort of gave them the respect from, from the start. And that probably screwed me immediately, uh, because I felt that, uh, so where are the reports? So why do you hire this guy to be the restaurant manager when he's not giving me reports? And I've come from a very structured background where every day, every week, we need to have uh, briefings and it has to be, we have to see where we are, the cost and all that. But that was never done. So I sort of sucked it in and uh, kept it to myself and that also screwed me. So we had, uh, it did very well, like I said, for, for about half a year. It did very, very well. But the running cost was so high uh, because of uh, live bands. So my partner wanted to have a live band every night for the whole week. Each night is about 600 to 1,000, so that burned away straight away. Uh, of course, when there's no crowd, the band still plays on, we still pay. So the cost for that uh, really killed us, and uh, we never really recovered from that point onwards. The landlord, in the end, uh, jacked the price by 70%, because uh, you see this block here, what we are is a tenant of a hostel. So the owner's a real, he's a real shrewd bastard. He knew exactly what he wanted. So if I'm going to jack your rental 70%, if you don't give it to me, 
are making the rooms. So he knew exactly what he wanted and he knew that that kind of money was there in that unit. So in the end, uh, we tried and we tried and we tried, but it didn't work out. So the last months of it, it was terrible for me because uh, my partners weren't working in the place. I was the only one that was uh, the working partner. Uh, by the end of it, for half a year, I had no salary. I did whatever I could to pay my own staff, pay the suppliers and pay this and pay that, but I was the last one to be paid. As a matter of fact, uh, I did a day job, a very early day job, uh, in a hotel somewhere, my friend got me a job. And that part-time job sort of got me going for half a year, whilst I pay off everybody else uh, in my own business. So that's uh, uh, not a good way to do business, okay? <laughs> that's not how it should be. So despite all the, uh, how it looks on the front, the back end was just in, in total dis dismay. Uh, it came down to me going to my partners and saying, what the fuck are you guys doing? This is not what I signed up for. This is not what I signed up for at all. I, I pumped in uh, about 40 grand. Uh, all of it evaporated. Uh, there was no trace of uh, where the accounts went. And, and even for the bands, even the, my partner was like, don't worry about it, we'll cover it. It was all verbal. There was no business plan. And that's very, very crucial uh, for me because when we started it, I kept harping about what the fuck is the plan? <laughs> we're just going, we're just going, we're headed somewhere, but we don't know where that is, you see. So I kept harping about it and I became the bad guy in the end actually for being vocal about where's the business plan to my senior partners. And uh, it didn't end well. The friendship was completely fucked. Uh, as you can imagine, the, by the end of it, when, when we had to close down, they didn't even show up. I was the one that closed the whole thing down and I saw the guys come inside, tear down the whole restaurant and they took all my shit and they took it all away in one day and it was, uh, it was bad, it was really bad. So I, <coughs> I uh, lost the marriage, I lost the business, I lost friendship and I lost a lot of money. But the money and all that is, is one thing. But uh, how much time do I have left? No more time. Oh, shit. <laughs> so uh, one thing about that taught me was that uh, if you... For me, my greatest mistake was that I knew that I was right, but I gave in to others. Right? I knew I was right. But because of my junior position, I sort of kept quiet. So from that, uh, some things here. You, well, you can read it, I guess. So challenge yourself to be alone. Uh, it's not always easy if you want to be a, a boss, a, a owner. Uh, you have to be alone. Nobody's going to be your friend, nobody's going to be nice job and all that. No chance. You do it because you have to do it and, and that's what you're supposed to be. Okay? Uh, people will always give up on you. People will always constantly give up on you. They want to drag you down to a position that they are at, not where you want to be. You get that? Okay? Attach yourself to people who are like-minded. Uh, that's very, very crucial. Uh, business plan. Please, please, please. If you have an idea, it's just a fart in the air if it's not a business plan. Okay? Put it down in paper. Everybody sees it and signs it. It's a business plan, okay? Very crucial. Uh, this may not be for everybody. Start first and develop later. Uh, we had 10 days to do a job and we did it. Uh, it worked for a while, but not all the way. Okay? So invest in your mind. Con constantly upgrade. Uh, whatever it is you, that you do, I suggest that you be very, very good at it. If not, you have no chance in this industry or whatever industry that you're in. Uh, don't blame people, don't, don't bullshit, don't be the victim. Uh, just suck it up and do it. Because nobody forced you to be the, the owner. Nobody forced you to be the boss. You wanted it, so suck it up and deal with it. Okay, that's my best advice to you guys. And uh, just don't give up. I gave up because it was, uh, it got me. Okay, the, the, I lost everything in, in that couple of months, so it got me. But the fact is, I could have changed it. And I could have changed it. So likewise, if you guys, if you have something to fight for, just fight for it. Uh, don't give up so easily. And uh, that's all. <laughs> At this point, I'd like to open the floor for uh, any questions for Gabriel. Um, I need water. Hang on. Mm. Mm. Right, uh, you mentioned, like, for example, if you do get into a partnership with a friend and things to go down south, what would be the best way to... Like you said, 
Well, I think, uh, okay, for, for that, I, I, I've always believed that friends should do business, and I think that's natural. Uh, however, the, the shit will hit the fan if you don't be very clear from the start. Uh, don't be, yeah, don't be friend friend about, about business. It's nothing to do with it, okay? Uh, why, why I say friends can be, uh, it's a good thing because naturally, the relationship is there. There's no need to bond or trust. It's all there. But what you should not do is to assume that this guy understands what you're saying. Because for my work environment as a chef, my fucking say goes. <laughs> right? You don't question me, it goes. Right? So, but I sort of uh, respect to them, kept quiet, and that screwed me in the end. So to answer your question, the, how do you let it go? It's not easy. I think uh, ultimately, when you come to that stage, you have to choose. Uh, only you can answer that, I suppose. Yeah. Sir, yeah. Were you a good chef, sir? I believe I was. Uh, I believe I was. Uh, I've been on TV multiple times. I've been on radio, magazines, newspapers. Uh, now, and all that. Uh, I believe I'm good at what I do. Uh, naturally, I'm a, I, I cook very, quite well, I suppose. Uh, but that did not give me the business acumen to run the business, right? So I knew, I knew the aspects of running the kitchen very, very well, and that never was the problem. The problem was the accounts, the marketing, the HR, and the people, and all that. So that was the ones that sort of, uh, I left it to the wrong people to manage. And that sort of created the bulk of the problem. Yeah. Uh, I can tell that you're a very passionate person when it comes to uh, cooking. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts of being optimistic about your passion? Yeah. And being aware of your passion? What are your thoughts on that? Well, for me, for when I do any business, or be right now I'm a consultant as well to some people, and whatever it is, the idea first, how do you monetize it? It has to make profit. Uh, not being a Chinese money mind, or no, it's something you do. If you want to do business, it has to make profit, full stop. So, however good your idea is, if you can't systemize it and monetize it, it's uh, just a fart in the air. Yeah. So, as far as passion goes, it's very crucial to me. Because I can't last in the kitchen for 13 years. It's a shit job, it's hot, there's it's, it's no air conditioning, there's no nothing. You know, it's a horrible job, but if you don't love it, I would not last. So likewise for you, if you have uh, something that, if you're working now in a full-time job, but your mind is in your hobby or your passion, that is a good indication that probably you should be doing that. Because cooking is not my first job. It was, I've done many things in my life, but I've always come back to cooking, uh, despite the horrible hours and all that, but yeah. So if you have something in your heart to do, I suggest you do it. Okay, last question. You said never, never give up to us. Uh, yeah. So do you believe that there is always a light in the end of the tunnel, or there are some ways that lead to the dead end? Right now, at that point when I gave up, I feel that... Uh, um, as an owner, I wasn't there. I didn't know a lot of aspects about being an owner. This was about four or five years ago. Uh, since then, actually, I've, I've, I've invested a lot of money in myself uh, with, uh, with what, you know, audio books and, and, and I can't afford to go to SMU, so <laughs> I do what I can to buy books here and there to learn about leadership, uh, marketing. The things that I'm weak at, uh, I learned. So right now, if you ask me if I had the same situation, I would not give up. But back then, uh, because I was only the chef, I chose to give up. And I chose to give up. Likewise, you chose to give up. Or you choose to go on. It's your own choice. Yeah, it's a choice. It's very, very simple. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.